Hey everybody, so before we get the uh, reaction going on, I just want to say that I heard about what happened in Japan of the Kyoto Animation Fire. Um, it's really such a tragedy that it happened, and I'm not too familiar with their uh, work, but the only... But the only anime that I am familiar from that studio is Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid, which is one of my favorite animes. And it, and like I said, it is such a tragedy that it happened in such a way. So I just want to say that, um, be, like, well, to all of you, be sure to give your your hearts and your prayers to the families and and victims that were affected by this. Thank you very much for listening, and I hope you enjoy this reaction. What is up, people of the internet? My name is Freelancer Ember, and welcome back to another Death Battle reaction video. This is gonna be all. Oh, this is gonna be the one where it's gonna be hard for me to choose. Um, Ang from Avatar: The Last Airbender, and Edward Elric from Full Metal Alchemist or Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, whichever one they decide to use. I'm probably sure they're gonna like do it on both versions to get as much information on them as possible. Anyway, um, so. Well, this is going to be on um, YouTube on Wednesday or today by the time when you're when you were seeing this, <laughs> you know, timing all. So before we we begin, please, 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 please watch the original episode on the Rooster Teeth website or on the Death Battle YouTube channel, whichever one, before coming to my reaction or anybody else's reactions. Go support the team that's been making this series awesome. So, like I said, it's Ang from Avatar versus Edward Elric from Full Metal Alchemist. Again, like I said, after the, um, what, wait, what was the last one? Oh, yeah, um, Johnny Cage versus Captain Falcon. Like, I, I don't want to choose. I love them both. Oh, uh, but it's going to be hard because as far as I, well, it's, well, not as far as I know, um, because Aang, he has never killed anyone. It's just not in his nature because being raised as a monk, he doesn't have, he doesn't have it in him to kill anyone. Like he, like he, his beliefs or what the monks have been, have taught him is that all life is sacred or something like that. That, that's why he's like a vegetarian. That's why he's a vegetarian. He won't even eat, he won't even eat them, eat, like eat meat. But it, like, and he has all, all these bending powers from when he first started out all the way up into, up until he fought Fire Lord. Um, Sozai? No, wait. Ozai. Wait. No, that's Sozin. Ozai. It was Ozai. I might be wrong. I haven't seen Avatar in such a long time. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was Ozai. My God, yeah. And for Aang, I think as far as I can remember from both versions, I don't think Ed has ever killed anyone either. Wait, unless you count, unless you count. Unless you count Greed from the original, because I think technically he did kill him, but I don't know if that's really... I don't know, but I don't know if that does count, because technically, Greed is a homunculus, not not an actual person. Or, like, a, like an, he's like a... He's a he's a, um, artificial person, Not he's not exactly human. So I don't know if I should count that. But anyway, they, they're both skilled, they're both prodigies in a way, but... And, one advantage for Aang is that he has all the ele elements he can bend to. But the thing is, throughout the entire, throughout the entirety of Last Airbender, he had, well, well, not, not like entirety. I'm t I guess maybe just from, uh, book three, two or three. You know what I mean? That he has never learned metal bending from Toph. Not even, not even in Legend of Korra. Well, I highly doubt they're going to count Legend of Korra because Aang's dead in there. So yeah, as for Edward, um, uh, yeah, he can like use alchemy to like use the environment, uh, use the environment to, for against Aang. But still, it's gonna be hard for me to choose, and I'm rambling, and I'm taking this intro way too long. So let's just, so let's just get this um death battle out of the way. Okay, let's get this death battle on the board. I mean, oh, I don't know who I want to win. I do not know who I want to win. I love them both, but. Let's just hear what they let's just hear what they have and um I'll give my final results before the fight starts. Okay. So here we go in 3 2 1 Now. The elements make up every aspect of the world we live in and no average person can tame them. But somehow these kids can master them with a vengeance. Like Aang, the Avatar. 
And Edward That's... Elric, the full metal alchemist. Yeah. He's whiz and I'm boom. Why does it look laggy? And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills. Whatever. To find out who would win a death battle. Okay, so pixelated. Would have been cool if it was a uh, CG. Water. Earth. Fire. Air. Heart. <laughs> Once the four nations lived in harmony, and some of their citizens could even learn to bend their nation's elements. But only the Avatar could master all four, and it's because, their duty to Because if we saw Legend of Korra, we know why. Nations. And since there's and how? always gotta be an Avatar around, a new one is born whenever the last one dies. But everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. Yep. Attempting to conquer the other three nations, the Avatar would Whatever. inevitably be their greatest obstacle. Man, they'd even go after a kid. Living among the air nomads, Aang was an energetic. There's no known uh, wait. Years old when he learned of his destiny. He D -D? was the newest Damn incarnation dead? of the Avatar. But he totally Whatever. wussed out, ran 66. away from home, and got frozen in ice for a hundred years. What the hell? That's not what I'd do if I found out I was an awesome elemental badass. I'd definitely find a way to make money off that. Boomstick, he's twelve. <laughs> Oh, I love that! <laughs> but running away actually saved his life. Yeah. As the Fire Nation knew the next Avatar oh, would be an yeah, so. and slaughtered them all in a horrific surprise attack. But the poor kid wouldn't be stuck in ice forever. He was eventually rescued by some new friends and began his quest to learn the other elements and yeah. save the world. And as an air nomad, he can really bend the wind to his will. Get that moon sick. He can use air bending to create whirlwinds and tornadoes or slice through solid stone. Yeah, I never even and read the comics, fly. like the books. Whee! Well, it's not exactly flying boomstick. What he actually does is manipulate the air currents to keep aloft. That's why he carries a glider, complete with snacks. <laughs> oh, well, I'm sure that'll come in handy. <laughs> <laughs> if it looks like a duck and sounds like a duck, it's a duck. Eh, whatever. Or I guess the flying avatar guy. But ducks actually can fly. Anyway, Aang can use air in pretty much every aspect of his Bog, life. Like Bog Bogwa style, okay. Like increasing his speed, improving agility, adjusting his body temperature, and even focusing okay. his breath to use as an attack. Yeah. After he learned water bending from Paku and Katara, Aang can make whips, knives, and literal tsunamis. Hey, I can do that too. Just give me a pool and watch this cannonball fly. <laughs> Does that mean I'm a waterbender? No. Uh, sure. <laughs> what? Waterbenders what? can also manipulate steam and ice. Yeah. Just like how I, the great waterbender Boomstick the Wet, will use my powers to swim through this frozen block. You what? Yeah. What? Uh, waterbending 101. <laughs> <sighs> you can be jealous. Oh, wow. I'm just bursting with envy. <laughs> Bending. Water bending requires a nearby source of water to use, like a pond or a filled bottle. The same goes for earth bending, which Aang learned from his mentor Toph. Earth bending is all about throwing rocks at people and a bunch of other cool stuff, like making walls and earthquakes. Yeah, blood bending or a lightning generation. Swallow you up, which is kind of creepy, actually. Yep. Last but certainly not least, Aang learned the art of fire bending from his longtime rival, Prince Zuko. Rival. Unlike the other arts. Firebenders can actually create fire to use at will. Firebending is so goddamn powerful. It's even got the deadliest bending technique of all, shooting lightning. Well, only the most advanced firebenders can cast lightning, which is usually an instant kill move. Yeah. While Aang never learned the move itself, he has learned how to redirect it through but, his body. Yeah, that. But even after learning the four elements, Aang got to meet one last master bender. Who taught him the art of manipulating a person's life energy. Mm. The purest form of bending. Uh, it's so you think that might be an advantage though. over Ed? One mistake could tear up Aang's soul. And with it, Aang defeated the Fire Lord and brought peace to the world at large. Well, with that and with his super form, the Avatar State. In the Avatar State, Aang's bending abilities grow immensely powerful. Yeah, but that's where this he's also vulnerable. The Avatar State lets Aang draw upon the power and wisdom of all previous Avatar incarnations. Though it is extremely risky, as dying while in the Avatar State yeah. ends the cycle of reincarnation permanently. Gee. Why would he care if he's dead anyway? Whatever. The coolest thing about the Avatar State is though. it makes you glow. In like stress. This. Okay. Behold! <laughs> How are you doing that? What? Oh, I, I drink a bunch of glow sticks. 
You need to go to the doctor. Oh. Like right now. <laughs> <laughs> My liver's processed way worse than this. What? Well, with or without the Avatar state, Aang is plenty powerful. He has the ability to move gigantic oh, stone columns. I knew columns it was Ozai. even carve canyons around an entire city. Not only has he survived hits from earthbending kings and massive explosions, he threw this gigantic column of rock at the Fire Lord. To get the column's mass, we compared Aang's height against it and determined mm. it must weigh 9,500 tons. Jesus. Aang's super fast, too. With airbending, he can run on water. Which, given his size, requires <laughs> a movement speed of well over 67 miles per hour. Wow! He used airbending to block a giant column-destroying explosive attack from the best-named character on the show. Best named character. Combustion Man! And Before it was Spark Sparky Sparky Boom Man. Fire Lord himself. Taking into account the distance between them and how far Aang's arm had to move to catch the lightning, he would have to react at least 155 times faster than sound. Wow. He is pretty unused to violence, though. I mean, he's a vegetarian pacifist for crying out loud. Yeah. But while he may seem like just a kid, Aang still saved the world and led it into a peaceful future. He did. To him, bending is elementary. If you want to be a bender, you have to let go of fear. I mean, I love Ed, but I'm... I love it, but I kind of saw Avatar first, so. Alchemists of old once tried to turn lead into gold. No, no, no! no. I got the timing wrong. Great results. The first, the, the first Elemists, World Metal Alchemist was in 2004. The of alchemy is actually possible by using the Earth's um, natural energy to reshape the Avatar didn't come until like a year later. Objects. And by drawing a circle thingy, a transmutation circle, which most alchemists use, except for the youth hold on. prodigy Edward Elric. Oh, what a little badass. He's Careful 18. Boomstick. He's a bit touchy about his So he's size. 18 by the hey, end of, I um, my mom like, he did, I'd get like close to the ending of Brotherhood? But Ed oh, and metal. his brother Alphonse figured they could not agnostic, dislikes milk and bread crusts. So they went for it, but things went south real fast. You know how people say they'd give an arm and a leg for something? Yeah. Ed literally did, and poor Al lost his whole body. Luckily, Ed managed to stick his brother's soul in a suit of armor. But still, yikes. This horrible experience has forever marked the two brothers. No one is meant to transmute the human soul, and the boys were lucky just he to escape three. their lives. But he got something good out of it, like super secret knowledge, including how to do alchemy without a circle thingy. He just has to clap instead. So, worth it? With these new abilities, Ed and Alphonse began their quest to restore their bodies. Specifically, they sought the incredible power of a Philosopher's Stone, believing it to be their only chance. Eventually, Ed joined the military, and thanks to his amazing potential, he was named by the Fuhrer, <laughs> the Full Metal Alchemist. <laughs> <laughs> what? Adolf Hitler? <laughs> uh, it's just Bradley. He's okay. Until he isn't. Yeah. Spoilers! Also, since Ed lost a couple limbs, he got them replaced with auto mail. Kinda like my leg. Auto mail is made from incredibly durable medical metal, alchemy. ranging from his original Jujutsu. steel one Jujutsu. to a gas-powered one to his best version okay. consisting of a mix of aluminum and carbon. Apart from being durable metal prosthetics, Ed's auto mail limbs... Why couldn't a prosthetic like be that ones. simple? He can even reshape his arm as a weapon. So he can turn it into swords and saws and stuff, increase <laughs> its durability by hardening its makeup, or turn it into an umbrella. Ah, truly a limb of many talents. But at the end of the day, Ed's true talent <laughs> lies not in sword fighting or umbrella holding, but the art of alchemy. Yep. He can do all sorts of crazy things with all the elements. He can <laughs> basically make anything he wants, like spears and shields. So long as he follows the rule of equivalent exchange. Yep. Anything created with alchemy must have a source of equal value and cannot be made fundamentally different. For example, lead can be molded into a statue but it cannot be turned into water. Mm. Other than that, there are three principles needed to use alchemy well. Comprehension. Which means you gotta understand what the thing you're using is made of. Uh -huh. Construction. Breaking stuff down. And reconstruction. Yeah, the construction, reconstruction. Ed is only limited by the materials at hand and his imagination. Yeah. At his full potential, he can do almost anything. He can purify water, create ammonium gas from ammonium nitrate, mm. repair entire houses, and transform a gun into a trumpet. <laughs> Never try and do that with any of my guns. <laughs> anyway, Ed's also learned destruction alchemy, which does exactly what you think it does. Make a big old kaboom. Ed's used it to destroy stuff like auto mail, but it can also be used to explode people's heads. So using destruction alchemy, Ed should be able to destroy something like this on a molecular level. Ha! Or you could just do that. 
Anyway, with all of his <laughs> abilities, yeah. Ed has done some incredibly impressive things. Not only has he blocked gunfire from a Gatling gun after it started firing, he's dodged a pistol from nearly point-blank range, <laughs> and his automail arm even took a bite from a lion-headed chimera. It was totally fine! Assuming this chimera has a similar bite force to that of a real lion, that means Ed's hmm. arm stood up to a force of 1,000 pounds per square inch. Wow. He's created a gigantic cannon and then survived that Yeah, they're using both versions and bits from the movie. It. And then he survived being on top of a huge boulder exploding too. We can measure the boulder's explosion against Ed's size to get an approximate energy output. With a radius of 36 feet, this blast must have been equivalent to over a hundred tons of TNT. Damn. How's that for equivalent exchange, bitches? <laughs> also survived an explosion that took out most of a 10-story building. Even apart from being tough, Ed has shown considerable strength when using alchemy. Like when he created a gigantic golem to crush his opponent. By measuring the size of the stone golem's thumb, Comparing it to the size of the average human's thumb and using that scale to estimate the size of the golem what? That gives us an estimated weight of over 3,000 metric tons Wow All this without any philosopher's stone because it turns out those things are really really messed up Yeah, right philosopher's stones are extremely powerful and can be used in many different ways Kimberly the Crimson Lotus Alchemist, for example, used one to create a massive explosion equal to 157 kilotons of TNT. <laughs> However, it turns out that these stones are composed of imprisoned human souls. Yep. So Ed and Al vowed to avoid them on principle. Although Ed can boost his alchemic power in a similar manner by drawing on his own life force, increasing his potential at the cost of shortening his lifespan. But that's what Ed ultimately had to learn what it truly means to let something go. And so he found another way to revive Al's body, sacrificing his own power for the sake of family. Yep. Aw, what a nice guy. But all in all, so long as Ed knows what he's trying to transmute, he's an amazing force to be reckoned with. Now let's go home together. Aw. Okay, fin final decision. Ah, uh, both both um competitors are really skilled. They're still powerful in their own right. But if I had to pick, fine. If I had to pick, do a final pick, it's gonna be Aang. I love you, Ed, but I'm gonna go for um our lovable uh, um Airbender. Don't take it personally. <laughs> okay, so fine. So I'm going for Aang. All right, the combatants are set, and we've run the data through all possibilities. It's time for a death battle! All right. Ooh, so calm. Oh, I'm Momo! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Momo. You're just too little. Who <laughs> <laughs> are you calling a pet squeak, you stupid hairless kid? Uh, nobody? <laughs> <I'll> show you. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Wait, why is it? Why is it on the left arm? Why is it on the left arm? Inconsistency. But whatever. Trick. There it is. Ah! Oh no! I'm sorry. <laughs> I knew it. A classic huh? misdirection. Is that Tom Habercorn? It sounds like it. Now I'm probably hearing things. Now I'm probably hearing things. Oh shit! How's this for small? <laughs> what kind of alchemy is 
There we go. Now we're going the right arm. The right arm. <laughs> Clappy magic. Yeah. Uh -oh. Ah! Oh my my cabbages! My cabbages! I won't lose you again. Oh. There, there you are. Can't believe that worked. There it is. This ends now. What are you gonna do, Ed? You're not gonna have enough time to draw a circle. At least I'm taller than you. You left me no choice. Didn't have a leg to stand on. Or arm, I guess. Ed may have been more quick with it. Henry Aang would have gained far more combat experience more than Ed once he entered the Avatar stage. But Aang's bending and abilities were far more versatile across 10, and years, okay. than combat alchemy. Yeah, it had cool stuff like cannons and gun trumpets, but Any Aang was fast enough to react to lightning, which is way faster than dodging a measly bullet. All right. Recall how Ed survived an explosion that destroyed most of a 10 story building. By examining the size of the building and thus the volume of the conical explosion, this blast must have equaled about 30 kilotons of TNT. But That's cool, but Aang did way more when he carved up a circle around that city in Avatar State. Oh. The force to blast such a huge ravine around the city of Yu Dao was a massive undertaking. By measuring the width, length, and depth of the affected area compared Ooh. to the size of the city, we Damn. thought it would take almost 160 kilotons of TNT to pull that off. Wow. More than five times greater than Ed's best durability feat. Can't believe so Ed definitely had it? the stuff to crush Ed's yeah. automail arm and the rest of him. Granted, Ed could reach this sort of power by sacrificing his life force. Remember Kimberly's explosion, the one empowered by a Philosopher's Stone, a blast worth 157 kilotons of TNT? That's almost identical to Aang's feat, and uh. theoretically, Ed could have been capable of this level of power. Theoretically. However, a Philosopher's Stone uses many souls, while Ed could only draw from his one. Hmm. Not to mention, drawing from his own life force meant his power up had a very short and dangerous duration limit oh. compared to the Avatar state, okay. which has no such limit. But even so, Ed's tactics and creativity kept him in the fight, yet the Avatar's speed, power, and versatility was too much for yep. him. Yep! Aang may be a pacifist in canon and would hardly kill anyone, but unleashing his full power is a sight to behold. That's true! Just when Ed thought he had the Aang of it, he <laughs> Missed the mark. God damn it, Boomstick! The winner is Avatar A. Woo! Okay, Thanks come on. Come on, show me something that's gonna, something that's gonna make me uh, fall yourself, off my chair. Come on. Down below. And if you'd like to see some more come battle on. and death, make sure to click the link over there. Anything good? That's right. Oh! Yo! Yo! Not exactly um, a kind of thing that made me fall off my chair, but still pretty good. Um, wait, ah, shit. Ghost Rider and what was the other one? I, I don't remember a lot of DC characters. Oh, Lobo. Okay. Okay, so um, how would you describe them? Uh, de um, motos demon ride, demon riding cyclist? No. Um, uh. Well, either way, well, either way, <laughs> yo, that's still pretty good. Even it's not exact, like I said, not exactly me, me falling off my chair worthy. Though I really want that to happen. Like, get me, a, get me one or two characters that'll make me fall off my chair. I want that to happen. <laughs> I want that to happen. But still, Ghost Rider versus Lobo was has no Ghost Riders haven't been in this. Oh my God, Ghost Rider! I want this dude to win. I mean, I. I mean, as I've been saying for the past uh, two, three years since I've been reacting to Death Battle, I don't know, or I'm not really into DC characters these days. I know I only enjoy Marvel more. So I don't know much about Lobo. So if you want to, like, educate me on who Lobo is, let me know in the comments below. As for Ghost Rider, 
I love, I love the guy. I mean, um, there's just so many imp- interpretations of him. I mean, I'm, I'm sure there, I'm sure his origin story is basically the same thing. I mean, I've only seen like the two Nick Cage Ghost Rider movies, and maybe a bit when he was like, maybe the animation of Ghost Rider was. I mean, was wasn't he? I think he was in a Hulk episode, wasn't he? Like in a, like in a whole old um Hulk animated series episode, wasn't he? I do not remember. I do not remember. Well, either way, anyway, that's a pretty good matchup. I knew our I I knew our lovable Airbender would win this. Like again, I love you, Ed, but I think Aang has has more va- has um a better advantage over you. So we're gonna end this right here. So pretty good death battle. So. Until the next time, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts of this death battle in the comment section down below. If you liked the video and you enjoyed it, go ahead and click the subscribe button. Also to hit the bell button to be notified of Melody's reactions. And follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Freelancer Amber for pretty much the same thing or just Ramsha in general. So remember to stay awesome, be nice animals, don't be dicks, keep moving forward, and I will see you all next time.